Okay, so it's been a week with the new iPhone 14 Plus and it's been a really odd experience. And I put it that way because on one hand, this phone is pretty quote unquote new as Apple hasn't made a larger plus size non-pro iPhone in a pretty long time. And with the 14 Plus essentially replacing the iPhone mini, it's quite a big difference. That said, the other side of this phone is ultra familiar in so many ways, mainly because this is essentially just a blown up version of the iPhone 14, which if you haven't heard by now is basically just a clone of last year's iPhone 13. So today I wanna go over in more detail how this dynamic has been using the iPhone 14 Plus one week later to ultimately help you determine whether or not it's the right phone for you. Okay, first, let's just jump right into the component that's really gonna make the iPhone 14 Plus stand out, and that's its size and form factor. The first big takeaway here is that this is a large phone. It really lives up to that plus size moniker and is commensurate to a lot of the other bigger phones out there today. Dimensionally, it's near identical to the Pro Max versions of the recent iPhones. You can see how it stacks up against the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So if you like that size, you're really gonna like the 14 Plus's form factor. Now, as this does fall under the non-pro category of iPhone, you do get an aluminum frame instead of a stainless steel one and a glossy finish on the back panel as opposed to a frosted one. And even though it could be argued that it's less premium than its Pro counter part, the iPhone 14 Plus is still a fantastically put together device that's flagship through and through. I actually prefer the look of the aluminum frame or the stainless steel one, mainly because it has this brush finish and the color matching is really well done. The glossy finish on the back does make the 14 Plus a fingerprint magnet, but to me, it's easier to grip and hold in the hand and it's still an ultra clean design, no doubt about it. Generally speaking, I've been critical around the larger iPhone's design when it comes to comfort. The completely flat frame is nice to look at and can actually help with comfort with the smaller iPhones, but with a phone this wide and a sharp edge digging into your palm, you do start getting more fatigue when you're using the device for extended periods of time. Now, one week later, one of the things I've really grown to appreciate with the iPhone 14 Plus is that it's noticeably lighter than the Pro Max iPhone, so the fatigue isn't as present with the phone as it's generally easier to use. Now, all of this comes together to provide users with the form factor that is gonna go over nicely with those who like larger devices as it's very well put together, and as we'll see, does provide for a really good user experience as well. Now, before we get into the next component around the iPhone 14 Plus, I want to give a big shout out to today's video sponsor, Basis. Basis makes some of the best smartphone accessories in the game today, and one of my favorites for the iPhone is this guy. This is the Basis Megatech Series 20 watt kickstand magnetic fast wireless charging power bank, and this thing is perfect for the new iPhones like the iPhone 14 as it takes advantage of its MagSafe capability. You can see that it snaps on instantly to the back of your device and starts charging immediately. There's no pressing buttons or connecting any wires, it couldn't be more straightforward. And what's great about this power bank is that you could still use your iPhone like you normally would while charging. One of my favorite features is that it has a built-in kickstand so you can prop up your iPhone while charging, which is great if you're watching a movie or something, and it's just super convenient. And what's also nice is that you're getting up to 15 watts of fast wireless charging through this power bank, as well as up to 20 watt PD fast charging when directly connected through a PD cable. It has a large 10,000 milliamp hour capacity, and it has this extremely useful built-in LED status display that allows you to instantly track your remaining battery percentage, which again, is just super convenient. This is definitely one of my don't leave home without accessories when I'm traveling, and it's great because it's pretty compact and not a pain to carry around. If you guys are interested in learning more about the Basis Megatech Series 20 watt magnetic charger, click on the link in the description below. Make sure that you're getting access to power in the simplest and fastest way possible. Check out Basis today. Okay, so following up on the iPhone 14 Plus's form factor, the area in which you're gonna notice the biggest size difference is gonna be with its display. This is a very large 6.7 inch Super Retina OLED display that comes in at a resolution of 2778 by 1284, and it looks fantastic. The significantly larger dimensions makes consuming content more enjoyable, especially if you're coming from a smaller iPhone, and it performs really well. Content comes off sharp, you get bright punchy colors and fantastic contrast, and a pretty immersive viewing experience with this edge-to-edge -edge design. Now, where you're gonna see differences between this and the similarly sized 14 Pro Max, number one, it has the old notch cutout at the top as opposed to the new pill cutout. Personally, I find the notch to be less distractive than the pill cutout because it tends to just blend in with the edge of the phone. That said, you're not gonna be privy to Apple's new dynamic island feature, which is kind of a bummer, but is a key way that the company is differentiating their pro and non-pro offerings. The other noticeable difference between the iPhone 14 Plus and the 14 Pro Max is that the display does not support ProMotion, so you're capped at a 60 hertz refresh rate. This is another way Apple is trying to distinguish between these two phones, and even though it is becoming a pretty dated refresh rate, it's still totally usable and won't be a problem if you've never experienced promotion before. Now, you also do not get the always-on display feature, which personally, I don't think is that big of a deal because from my experience with the 14 Pro, it does drain the battery, so I just turned it off. And that brings me to the one area of the iPhone 14 Plus that truly makes it stand apart, and 
that's its battery life. So I mentioned in my earlier review that Apple made the bold claim that this phone has the best battery life of any iPhone in the world, which was pretty attention grabbing as battery life has become one of the most important features to consider when figuring out which phone is gonna work for you. And after doing some pretty comprehensive testing over the past week, I have to say Apple kind of delivered on that promise. I was able to get through almost two full days of use on a full charge with pretty moderate use, which is kind of nuts and it does perform noticeably better than my iPhone 14 Pro Max. And this makes a lot of sense because the size of the 14 Plus mirrors that of the Pro Max iPhones, but you don't have the power hungry features like ProMotion, Dynamic Island, or the always on display. Moreover, another reason why the 14 Plus likely performs better is because it's equipped with last year's A15 Bionic processor. This is a tried and true chip when it comes to efficiency and optimization, and I think it adds to why the 14 Plus performs so well. Now, it is a bummer that it's last year's chip from an overall performance standpoint, mainly because it's the first time Apple stopped equipping all their flagship iPhones with their newest processors. It's still a super fast and powerful phone though, and I don't notice any performance deficiencies compared to the 14 Pro, at least not yet. Now, the last area of performance that I wanna talk about is with the iPhone 14 Plus's cameras, and one week later, I'm kind of split on this. I mean, my first instinct is to be disappointed, mainly because, again, there's not a lot of changes from last year when it comes to the camera's hardware. You get a dual camera setup with both sensors coming in at 12 megapixels and you also get the true depth selfie camera that also comes in at 12 megs. Now that might sound kind of vanilla but I'm just gonna come on and say it the iPhone 14 plus can still pump out some of the best still image photos in the game today. I've really learned to appreciate how natural and accurate the photos coming out of this iPhone are and one thing to note despite what could be very similar hardware you do get access to Apple's new photonic engine and the updated computational photography features with the 14 plus plus. and because of that you could see when you compare these shots with what's coming out of the 14 Pro Max, it's pretty similar despite the latter having a completely different camera suite. And one week later, I actually like using the 14 Plus's camera better, mainly because it's easier to use. And when it comes down to it, the quality difference with the naked eye is virtually impossible to really distinguish in most cases. Plus, when it comes to video, the 14 Plus is equipped with the newest features like the action mode stabilization and the 4K cinematic mode, and the quality continues to be market leading by a considerable margin. Which ultimately brings me back to my original question, is the iPhone 14 Plus worth it. Now again, the main issue here is that yes, the 14 Plus on its own is pretty great, objectively speaking, but when you take into consideration the other iPhones that are available, it's a very oddly positioned phone. With the starting price of $899, that's only $100 shy of going with the new iPhone 14 Pro, which would be a considerable upgrade all around for a relatively affordable price. You'd get a better build, a more powerful processor, a new camera suite, and all the fun new features like Dynamic Island and the always-on display. And it's kind of a bargain at $100. Now on the other side of that coin because the 14 plus is so similar in terms of performance to last year if you're looking for maximum value going with the iphone 13 makes a ton of sense that phone will give you virtually the same user experience and performance and you can get a new one right now for 699 which is quite a cost savings so i think the only reason to go with the 14 plus is if having a larger screen is an absolute requirement and you have a firm budget of staying under one thousand dollars but even then you could probably find a used 13 pro max in good condition at that price point which would be a great buy so again, the 14 plus is just not in a place where it makes immediate sense to buy. But hey, that's just me, and I wanna know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the iPhone 14 Plus? Do you think it's eventually gonna find its stride? Or is this phone officially a dud? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys find it useful. Again, I really appreciate it. Check out these other reviews if you're looking for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.